So there's still some more uses we can get out of this data flow before we move on to another data uh, set of data that I want to do more work with. So let's go ahead and zoom into this one. And if you, just a couple of reminders. If you haven't uh, had a chance yet, please uh, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. It definitely helps out and gives me some awareness and an idea of how these videos are doing and whether or not people want to see more of them. Your comments have been great. So this actually, this video will actually not, not only give us a another step in our flow here that we need to start considering, but uh, also help address some questions in the comments. So one thing I wanted to get to is throughout our flow, we've been we haven't been addressing for failures, right? If something if something doesn't happen, like say this put SQL here into the MySQL database doesn't work and it spits out a failure. Well, right now, the, what we're doing with that is just terminating those, right? We're not, we're not handling them in any which way. We are t handling retries, which will really only be helpful in this case uh, if it if the database cannot be updated and attempting to operation makes the state again. So, like, say the table's locked or something like that. I think in most cases it covers all those. Uh, so that will help. But say it just fails outright, like maybe the server went down. So and that probably won't get routed over to, or mo most cases never gets routed over to the uh, the retry, it gets routed to a failure. So how can we handle those? Well, let's go ahead and take our Elasticsearch route that we did last time, because uh, this is a pretty good one to work with and we can demonstrate it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this guy so we can start pushing these down and have the flow go to make sure everything's working correctly. And there we go. So a thousand in so far in the last five minutes. And uh, now our flow is working, right? But what happens if our NIFI, or our Elasticsearch server goes down? We lose our connection, right? Well, let's go ahead and demonstrate that. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to Portainer real quick. Check my Elasticsearch server. Here it is. Forgot to give it a friendly name. And we're just going to stop that one. Kick ourselves back over there and things should not be going right. Okay, so there we go. We're getting errors. Now, you notice these are not being routed over to the retry so they can get reattempted. And based off the termination and the relationships that we have here, uh, it's because retrying the more, more likely the way it's handled is retrying it won't do any good. So in this case, it just can't be written to the Elasticsearch server or index. So we need to handle for this and we need to do something because right now we get our data. It comes in from, well, if we weren't generating, if we weren't regenerating this uh, copy of the data over and over, these two, three profiles, uh, say it was coming straight from our API, right? Well, that's a one-time thing. We get that flow file comes in, we do stuff to it and transform it. And then we're ready to push it into whether it's our database over here or our Elasticsearch index. There's only that one copy. And if we lose it like we are right now, then it's gone for good. We, we, well, uh, you could always do a replay, <laughs> I guess, if you wanted to, but that's not the right way to handle this because replays are really good for like trying to fix problems that you're finding inside your data flows. Now, what we need to do here, first of all, is go ahead and stop this put, Elasticsearch. So, and we're going to handle for this. Now, there's many ways you can handle a failure. Uh, it depends on your situation, what you want to do with it, and how you want to do it. But uh, this is just a quick little example, and hopefully this example will give you some ideas on how you can work with your data and handle it for yourself, because uh, your situation will be different. But in this case, for this example, what we're going to do is there's a specific processor in NiFi called retry flow file. So we're going to grab that one. And it's not available in all versions of NiFi. I believe it was added in 1.10, I believe. Make sure I'm saying the right version. Yeah, I think it was 1.10. So if you're using an older version, you may not see it there. All right, so we have retry flow file, right? And let's go ahead and look at its usage here. A couple things we want to check out. So quick description of it. Flow file passed to this processor have a retry attribute value checked against a configured maximum retry value. So there's a new attribute that will be introduced here into our flow files. And it's basically a counter, the retry attribute that creates a, that's a counter. So we know how many times we've attempted. And uh, based off that, 
We can see that it will push things to the retry attribute if they're still under the maximum. And if they're over the maximum or at the maximum, they will go ahead and go to the uh, retry or what's the relationship down here? Retry is exceeded. Uh, and then there's also the op uh, possibility that FO file could be penalized coming to this one from a failure from another one. So that could just, what that means is really, it just adds a little bit of time to when the FO file will get processed through this processor. So those are still in effect. Uh, okay, so we have a couple of things. We have retry attribute, max retries, penalize retries, true or false, set the true or false processor, penalize the input FO file before passing them to the retry attribute. And then fell on non-numerical overwrites. So uh, if the attribute's already defined and it's not an uh, integer, basically, then what's it going to do? <laughs> uh, and then reuse, reuse mode, right? So we have all those. Uh, we have our dynamic properties. And then we have our relationships here. So we're going to have a relationship of retry ex exceeded, retry, and failure. So retry is what we'll push back into the previous processor that we want to try it again. Exceeded is now we need to do something with it. I mean, what if it, it expended all the three tries attempts? In most cases, we probably don't want it going on forever. So we want it to do something with this data. So in the case of we don't want to lose the data, right? So is there someplace we can put it in the meantime that might be safer? <clears throat> and it won't get it into the data sets we need, like our index or our SQL database. But can we put it someplace else that we can just go back and retrieve it later to try to handle these or until we fix our problem. Okay, so that's really all we need out here. So let's go into this one. Uh, what we're going to do is bring our failures over here because we are failing a lot right now. All right, and see we got a backlog now because we stopped it. So let's go ahead and stop this one real quick. And go in here, we're going to set it. Uh, retry attribute, I'm not going to change it. I'll use the default one. In this case, we're going to do a maximum of one retry so we can just move through and not have to wait too long. We'll leave the penalized retries on true. And I'm not worried about the other two right now. Okay, so what do we want to do with this? Well, if we want to push the full file back on the retry, right? So once they've met their requirements here, they can go ahead and go back. So that's what we're going to do here. So after they come through here, and the other thing is we can control this, right? Maybe we only want to reattempt if they fell over here on um, putting it into Elasticsearch. Maybe you're like, you know what? Maybe the server went down and had a little blip or something like that, but we don't want to try immediately as soon as it's available. Maybe I want this processor to run every five minutes, give ourselves a little leeway there, right? And then in that case, we could set a concurrent uh, we could bump up our concurrent task. Maybe it's like 10, 15, 50, I don't know. Uh, depending on like how many you want to be able to push right back in there. In this case though, we're not going to do that because you'll start creating a queue over here and then it'll get messy as, there as well, right? Uh, but if you're setting your retry limit up high enough where you know you've tried like five times or something like that and you think that's okay, then maybe you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so now we need to handle for, well, what happens if we exceed the retries that we have set up right now? And in this case, what I'm going to do is I want to take the flow file and just write it out to a put file processor and just store it into a, a directory on my server. So that's what we're going to do. Now, in order to do that, I need a update attribute because in order to feed the flow file into the put I need to have a file name and I don't have file names because these came from an API. Come over here and let's go ahead and grab our last one. So we're going to do the put file. Whoops. There we go. All right. So so if we look at put file, we know from previous usage, put file has a attribute that it looks for and it's reading for file name. That way it knows what, what to create for the file. So we don't have one in our attributes right now because all of our data came from an API. So we need to create the attribute that we're looking for. 
And in this case, I've already put together my attribute. So let's go ahead and add it. File name. And all we're gonna do in this case is I'm just creating a file with a timestamp on it. So here's my month, day, year, and then the time. Now I'm doing it down to seconds. If you're expecting a lot of failures, you probably want milliseconds in there so you can not get a whole bunch of duplicated names. Uh, and honestly, this is just an example. I would ex fully expect you to like give it a more additional naming than that, like what it's about or something like that. Okay, so we've got update working now. It has its data filled out. We're not doing anything else in here. Profile, we need to tell it to go someplace. So the path we need to send it to in this case is gonna be op data and files. Uh, conflict, yeah, let's just replace it for right now. And then we're good there. We're not gonna handle failures here because we shouldn't have any. <laughs> the only one we should really get is permission based if we didn't set up our permissions correctly. For now I find a write to the directory and I think we're good. Okay. That way, miss them. Oh, success, yeah. All right. Now, we have this flow created. So, ideally what should happen is anything that fails in here should get pushed over to retry. And we told retry we only want to attempt to one max retry. So, this will create the attribute flow file dot retries because we don't have them over here. It'll start off as a, and then they'll all get a one on them. As they come out to the retry, they'll go back again. If they fail again, they'll come back and then they'll be passed to retries exceeded. And then all the way down to putting our files into our directory. All right, so those are all running. This guy, this one was running too. And now we are ready to start. And we have a lot of files that are gonna fail. Oh, that's all right. We can deal with that. Okay, so. We start there. We just moved our entire queue over. <laughs> and everything's going to get processed. Just give it a couple minutes here. Yeah, it shouldn't take too long. Probably have a penalty on them. Flow files getting penalized. Penalized. And then leave it on like five minutes. Oh, okay, good. Okay, flow files are moving over. Oh, they're gonna have to take their turn getting all the way back over here though, huh? I may actually have a little bit too many. Let's empty this queue. Because I start off too many here. I have to restart it and start a smaller batch. <laughs> There you go, flow virus are coming back. Some of these should be failure, maybe all 10,000 of those, because that should be the first group, I believe. They wait for their penalty. <clears throat> and we'll stop it right there, because I don't want to, we'll make sure they got their file names on them. There you go, they went through, they got updated, we look at them. We can see now they have a file name, perfect. And now we should be able to put them into the directory. There you go, everything's being written. We've just handled, we just created a way to handle our failures now. So now say I would have had a higher retry count, they would have just kept looping through here, right? Until finally my connection came back up and I could access my Elasticsearch server again and start re and start getting them indexed correctly. But this gives you a way, so um, like I know in a comments I had, there was an uh, example being provided where uh, the user is consuming a file and then they process it through their transformations that they're doing and everything and they're trying to write it into a database. Uh, but sometimes, or they may begin failures on when they go to write to the database. And now they've lost data because it's their failures aren't being handled, right? 
So this is one way to take care of it. Now, another uh, thing to keep in mind is when you use the Git file processor, you will actually already get when when you get a file, you're already going to get the file name added as an attribute from this one. So that means when you come over here to update attribute, all you need to do really is create a update attribute. Oh, let me stop it real quick. So in that case, all you need to do, or you don't have to do, you can skip the entire attribute. I don't, that's what I meant. Is uh, you skip the entire attribute because if you look on a git file, so we're gonna go ahead and just create a quick example just so you can see. Uh, we just need to go to wait. That works for me. Okay, so we're gonna get files from where we just put them. And we're just gonna grab everything. So we should get a whole bunch here. Start that, stop that. There we go, we got a couple. Uh, list the queue. Okay, so you can see we picked up files, the file names right here, and now they already have an attribute for file, there it is, file name. So whatever your file originally was named will keep its name. As long as you don't delete the attribute or remove the attribute within your flow, it should just stay with that one all the way. Now, the only time that might become a problem is if for some reason, like uh, over here, yeah, so if some reason like I did over here, right? Uh, for an example, we were looking at, we're splitting. So say you're taking in a CSV file and then you're splitting that CSV to individual CS, uh, flow files. Well, all those flow files now have the same name. <laughs> so uh, what you might want to do is take the take a combination of what I did over here, right? You might want to still have the attri update attribute on there. But what you could do is update the attribute. Uh, you could, could just take whatever the original I think you'll be able to do it this way, which is uh, just take the original file name and then concat onto it, right? And then you should be able to just maybe add a date timestamp with milliseconds on there or something like that. That way you can avoid, uh, if you're splitting the file, this is the only concern you would have is I, I would make sure that when you split it, that you're not renaming all of them the same one. <laughs> Uh, so this will help get rid of that. But if it's just one big flow file and you never split that flow file and you, cause maybe you're just taking it all in as one big flow file and trying to write that all to your database all at once, well then you don't have to worry about it. And then your failure can just skip the attribute here. Uh, cause all you have to do, the, the put file already has that file. It's already looking for that file name attribute. That's already on your flow files over here. So you'll be, you'll be good to go. But like I said, if you're splitting it, watch out. You may have to alter the flow file name a little bit in order to make sure you don't overwrite the data. Or you could, uh, if you split it over here and it fails to go in there, you could maybe set up a merge if you wanted to, I guess. And uh, so you don't have a whole bunch of little tiny files and you don't want to deal with those. You could add a merge in here first or after the retry, you could set up a merge next. And then from the merge, bucket them back into bins of uh, whatever, 100 or whatever, and then go ahead and move on to put in the file. Or uh, you don't have to do it into a file. You can put it into anything else. Maybe you have a backup database or something like that, right? So you can put it into a different table. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So hopefully that provides a pretty good example, expands our workflow a little bit here, our data flow. And I need to get rid of this, clean it up real quick. All right, so definitely, uh, hopefully this answers a couple of questions I saw in the comments about how, uh, handling failures or ways to handle failures. This is just one option. There's many more different ways you could do this. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this is your starting point for you can decide on how you want to utilize handling failures inside of your data flows. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in being in that notify button if you're interested in getting notified when more videos come out. Uh, and I'll catch you next time.